Awesome. Well, hey, I appreciate everybody being here. I'm, I'm jealous. It's just me this week. Mark's down in sunny Florida, 80 degrees, living it up. And uh, Charlotte, Charlotte's officially gotten cold, which Carrie is probably really like a, a, a spring day for y'all. Uh, I'm not feeling bad for you, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I, I, uh, I appreciate y'all letting me have a couple minutes on this call as always. I wanted to go over uh, two things with you. Uh, one, if you're local to the Charlotte area, we're having our third event on December the 6th. So I'll post the link for the event right there. It's going to be covering all things uh, renovation lending. So how you can either sell more homes using that renovation product uh, or show your buyers, hey, if you find a house with good bones and maybe you're just saying, we want to redo the kitchen, we want to redo the bathroom, um, we're going to show and share ways that you can actually finance that into your mortgage loan so that you can get those renovations done uh, when you move to the home. So uh, Trey Perry leads our renovation department at Movement. He's going to be our guest. So we're really looking forward to that event on uh, December 6th. So I'll post that link here in a second. Uh, now for the more fun news, uh, you know, I feel like we've probably been talking about uh, inflation, hopefully peaking for a long time on this call, which feels like months and months and months at this point. Uh, we finally got a really favorable CPI report last week. Um, and you saw the largest dip in mortgage rates in one day history. Uh, so that you went from rates somewhere around 7% back into like a low 6% range, which is fantastic news. Um, and honestly, I'd, I'd advise you if you have a buyer client or somebody on your team who's working with a buyer client uh, to do one of two things. One, if they're under contract and they locked in prior, our team would be happy to give them some type of second look. We've got two saves going on right now uh, where we're saving over $500 a month for both clients. So there is significant savings to be had uh, if your client's locked and previously to that, or uh, if they're still at the pre-approval stage and out looking, would definitely recommend getting a second opinion there because they likely can qualify to purchase more home right now, or they're going to be at a much more affordable payment than they think they were at their pre-approval amount. So wanted to share one thing, and I'm going to post this as an attachment in the chat too. Um, Carrie, can I share my screen? I can. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so I just wanted to share this with you from an educational perspective. One, so this is your, your CPI numbers over really a trailing last 12 months. October, this is the one we just replaced. So this is a 0.6% reading right here that we replaced with a 0.3%. So when that number is higher and we come in with lower, inflation number comes down, which is good news for mortgage rates. Now, if you look for the next several months, we've got higher readings that we should be replacing with lower readings. Um, and then if we get into the second quarter next year, you got higher readings again that we should be replacing with lower readings, knock on wood. So all this to say, it should be really positive news for mortgage rates in the coming months as we get into 2023. Um, so really, really excited about that. I think we'll see where it all shakes out. I think we'll end up somewhere around five to five and a half percent. I think we'll be a, a more normal lending environment as we get into next year. So I'll share this um, picture with you all so you have it. If you have any questions with it, I'm happy to, to dive into more of a one-on-one -on -one with you on it, but it's a great thing to be sharing with your clients so they can understand, hey, this is how mortgage rates work and, and what they're attached to. So uh, thank you all for the time today and, and certainly looking forward to hearing more uh, on this call. Awesome. Yeah, that would be fantastic. You guys always grab the information that Drew and Mark share in the chat if it can be valuable to you. We really appreciate them coming on pretty much every single Monday, they are just dedicated to be on this to give us some information, um, which we're really, really grateful for. So thanks again, Drew, for being here. Any questions that anybody has for Drew before we move to the main part of the call? Well, it was good news. So hopefully you guys were all chatting with your buyers and uh, and having those conversations. I read somewhere, Drew, too, that <clears throat> I think December 13th is a date to watch because we saw rates drop a little bit based on the information from October and now November kind of being a repeat month. They believe that we may see possibly another little drop on December or around December 13th when the news of November comes out. But either way, um, you know, it's showing that there's some movement in this. Those that have been on the fence, this could be a great time. Yeah, definitely, definitely important dates coming up. The Fed's got their meeting in December. Uh, it'll be curious to see what they do now that they did get kind of some drastically different numbers than they expected. Yeah. So we'll have to watch their comments. Um, I think originally they were expecting 75 basis points in December. It'll be interesting to see if they still roll with that or maybe they drop it to 50. Um, yeah. we, we've got to kind of keep an eye on the Fed. I, I think they they love to either uh, wait too long to start doing anything or do too much and, and are, are slow to react. So we'll, we got to watch their comments. There was somebody who came out and kind of said they were committed to continuously uh, mm -hmm. rising interest rates. Um, and they don't want it to slow down in the house. They don't want that 
interest rate to keep going down in the housing sector and spur a bunch of activity again. So we've got to watch yeah. what the comments are because the market's very, um, very in tune with what they're saying in terms of reactions. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we are grateful to have you come in on Mondays and kind of keep us posted. And if those of you that are not local to Drew and Mark, you know, they do service people across the country, but also you should be getting this information and having these conversations with your local lender partners, because this is how you're stronger and how you're more educated and how you are out there being the best version of yourself, not only for um, your clients and prospective clients and community at large, but also for the realtor population, because many people are not in tune with this and don't have these conversations. And so who you are and what you share obviously continues to attract what you want and more of what you want. And that leads us to uh, the main part of our call, you guys. Thanks for being on the Revenue Share Huddle again. We always have a good group. We've got a number of people watching live. So hi to you guys as well. We have another great guest. We've been committed to bringing you guys guests every Monday for many weeks now and into the new year. And these are people who are in the top 80, 85 of all 86,000 agents with an EXP when it comes to growing their revenue share organizations. We're super grateful that they're willing to come in and share some of their time because as you know, Many times they're not directly uh, related to uh, in the revenue share um, perspective to all of us here in EXP Family Tree, and yet they're willing to give up their time. And I think that is just something that is um, standing out more and more to me every single day in the last year that I've been part of this company is we truly are all committed to the growth of this company, whether it directly or indirectly affects us. But indirectly, we're all affected because we're shareholders, we are agent owners, and we want to help each other. And that is the um, culture of this company. So without further ado, we have a guest on the call today, Matthew Stewart. Welcome. Thank you so much for being willing to join us today. We really appreciate you. Thank you, Carrie. A pleasure to be here. Love to give back. Yes. Thank you. So we, um, you know, we've been growing our EXP Family Tree Workplace Group now for the last couple of years. I think we're up to almost 8,000 members. So thanks Amazing. to you all for growing it. Yeah. Um, we have a really active group here, people who want to learn, give back, help each other. And on Mondays, we do this revenue share call. On Tuesdays and Wednesdays, we have calls uh, focused a little bit more on productivity and growing um, our real estate businesses. So um, it's just really awesome to see people showing up and to be able to have people like you that are willing to come in and help us pour into them. And so really quick before you get started, I wanted to um, just give you a little bit of an introduction, if you're okay with that. Sure. Awesome. So it sounds like you've been in real estate for quite some time. Did I read that you have been in real estate since age of 19? Yeah. Yeah. Um, see, you could tell I, I got the gray hair here. <laughs> Short sales. Uh, yeah. yeah. You've been through it all in that time, I would imagine. Yeah. I started at 23 and I thought that was pretty young. So I'm impressed that you uh, got into this at 19. Uh, sounds yeah. like you come from a family of real estate, which is awesome. And are you still in the Sacramento area? Is that correct? I am. Yeah. In the greater Sacramento area. Mm -hmm. It's kind of awesome. urban sprawl in Sacramento area, but okay. yeah. Awesome. And you have, it sounds like a beautiful family. You have a strong faith. You love to coach and help others and give back. And um, even though you have been um, always in the top echelon of um, entrepreneurs in this space in your area, one of the things that stood out is that you really do um, love to be able to pay it forward and give back all of your knowledge. And so what a great place to be able to do that here at EXP. Yeah, absolutely. And we got Shannon Pyatt on here. Oh my gosh. I better be on my- <laughs> What's up, brother? Point. How you doing, man? I better be on my game today. <laughs> I'm taking notes, man. I'm taking notes. <laughs> You'll crush uh, it, brother. Yeah. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Yes, Shannon's a big part of our EXP family tree, and um, he's been coming on these calls on Mondays for a long time with us, so um, we have a great group. So um, tell us a little bit about you beyond what I shared. How long have you been at EXP? What does your revenue share organization look like, if you don't mind, because we love to share that at the beginning, just so people can kind of get a perspective of how long you've been here and what it looks like today. So maybe if we start there. Yeah, absolutely. So um, this month will be my third year at EXP. So kind of a little background just so people can kind of understand. So yeah, I started at 20. I'm, I'm 47 now. Um, I started with Coldwell Banker, then was recruited over to Keller Williams, uh, like 24 years old. Um, it was pretty revolutionary at the time, 22 years ago. Nobody had heard of it. They thought it was a paint company, you know, Ke uh, <laughs> Kelly Moore, Sherwin Williams. What What is that? And and uh, thankfully, I was entrepreneurial, uh, you know, minded, 
I was tired of just paying unlimited to Coldwell Banker at, at KW. They had this thing called a cap, which I'd never heard of. And I, oh, that's where you stop paying the broker and you get to keep it all. And I went, well, that just makes business sense. So sure, I think I'll do that. And then you got to brand yourself, you know, at KW. Yeah. And so that was kind of the progression. And then the, the final thing was that you could get rewarded for helping to grow the company through what's called uh, profit sharing, which again was revolutionary at the time, mm -hmm. 22 years ago. I think I was the 23rd agent in all of Northern California that came on wow. board. And I and I still am running with some of those people today that are now at EXP. So one of them was the number one Keller Williams agent in the entire world seven times named Tom Daves. Uh, super humble, great guy. Um, he came on just before I did at KW. And I think I was, like I said, the 23rd in all of Northern <laughs> California. And then a gentleman named Don Yoakum, who built uh, 10 brokerages from scratch to over 2,000 agents. So we had this great thing going on at KW. I was there for a decade. But in my best year of, of profit sharing, and I was recruiter of the year out of the most profitable office in the world at the time, which was Roseville, California, I made $19,700 in passive reoccurring income. Now, most in the KW space go, oh, that's really good. And I go, well... Yeah, but it doesn't get me off the transactional treadmill. I'm still only as good as my last sale and I'm still trading time for money. And that's what real estate is. It's it's really a glorified job. It's just a high paying job if you if you do it well. Um, but, you know, if you get sick or you get in a car accident or something, God forbid, happens and you can't sell anymore, your money stops. So that, that should scare uh, each and every one of us as realtors, as professionals in the industry that we need to somehow figure out how we get out of trading our time for money or not be 100% dependent on trading time for money. If you know Robert Kiyosaki and the cash flow quadrant, that book, I recommend you all should get it. On the left side of the quadrant, and I've had to learn, see on me, it's the right side over here, but I know it's reversed <laughs> for you guys. So I'm getting better, right? I'm always getting better. So on the left side of the cash flow quadrant, you have um, employee, and then you have self-employed, and that's where realtors are. Mm -hmm. You want to get over to the uh, right side of the cash flow quadrant, which is business owner, investor. And a, and a business owner uh, is someone that if they were to leave their business for, um, I think he defines it as a year, and you don't mm -hmm. touch it, check in or what have you, and you come back in a year, your business should at the very least maintain itself or actually grown in your absence. I don't know any other realtor that could say that they left their real estate business for a year and it grew in their absence. Yeah. Pretty darn rare, yet to meet one, right? So we have to be honest with ourselves and say, yeah, with real estate, I'm over here on the left side of the cash flow quadrant and I need to get over to the right. That's one of the beautiful things about eXp and what appealed to me was, okay, um, and quite frankly, what appealed to me early on with KW with the profit yeah. share. That's what appealed to me. I went, okay, my parents have been brokers for 49 years with my mom being the number one agent in multiple counties. Wow. Um, and this was back in the days when there was no smartphone, no, no uh, digital signatures, no texting, uh, none of these conveniences that we as realtors have today. It was, you get in your car, hey, they countered your counter. Are you still awake? I can swing by tonight. We can get this deal done. Press hard. There's three copies. <laughs> and then the next phone call was calling me saying, hey, son, hey, sweetie, uh, you know, you're going to have to cook your own dinner. Uh, there's probably some frozen chicken patties in the freezer from Price Club. Um, you know, we'll be home soon. And I, mm -hmm. you know, I'd hang up and I go, man, real estate sucks. I hate real estate. I'll never get into it. Right. Well, I didn't hold out too long. Got started at 20, as I said, but <clears throat> I always wanted to do it differently than what I saw other realtors, including my parents doing. And that was trading time for money, right? Leaving church early to go put the open house sign set up and all that. And so I was always looking for an exit strategy from the beginning. And I thought KW was it. It, it wasn't. Um, and fast forward to EXP three years ago, I almost passed on it because uh, I thought, well, guys, I've already been there, done that. I've done the KW thing. It's basically KW virtual or online, right? And they said, no, no, it's actually quite different in some areas. Takes all the good stuff from KW, but spits out all the bones, right? All the bad stuff. So I said, okay, tell me how it's you know better or what have you. They said, well, the 20,000 that you built at KW uh, a year if you do the same thing you did at EXP, it wouldn't be 20,000 a year, it'd be 20 to 30,000 a month. 
And I went, oh, now you got my attention because that is, that's a game changer that can get me off the transactional treadmill to live my best life. You know, so many of us as realtors, I find them and I'm talking with realtors all around the country. I think we're in 27 states and three countries now. And they're literally um, uh, living to work as mm -hmm. opposed to working to live their best life. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, um, uh, so that's kind of the background on me. Three years EXP. Um, I got going on revenue share creation right from day one because I said, look, I, I, I'm looking at my end. What's my end game? And I want to be with my lovely bride here, um, Lexi, so that we can get her retired from uh, being a top title rep and get me out of doing production, build my revenue share up so I can get completely out of production if I want to, or I can pick and choose. And just mm -hmm. take listings, just take, you know, whoever I want to work with. And if we don't want to work for a quarter and just go travel Europe, we can do it. It doesn't matter because the money still comes in. Right. Yeah. So that's kind of a little background of my motivation within the first 18 months with the EXP, I was able to generate a six figure reoccurring income. And that's continuing to grow as we're building uh, our organization and loving on and supporting realtors and, and so forth. So what is the total number in your group right now, if you don't mind sharing that? You no, know, I didn't look today. I want to say oh. it's uh, last I looked yesterday was about 162. Yep. Um, and so we're we're actually coming into the moving season. So uh, yeah. I would expect that we're going to be pretty darn close to 200 um, here within three months uh, or four or less. Mm -hmm. I have a production team of 13 that are coming on board now. I've got about another six or seven icon level producers uh, that are coming on board and, and so on. So yeah. Anyway, that's awesome. And thanks for and using the chat feature there. You should, I, I, as a side note, I do live agent attraction calls Monday through Saturday, open to anybody and everybody in EXP. I literally hop on my zoom and uh, I do, I was doing it right before this call and I put my phone call on speaker I have my external speaker that I just put it where you can hear the exchange of me talking to a, a, an agent cold all across the nation and you get to hear the interaction and the exchange. And awesome. so what I encourage people, I say, look, come on, mute yourself, obviously, turn your camera on. That's another thing. I, if we're going to be on Zoom and we're going to be a relational company, we should have our cameras on, right? And sometimes I'll come with bedhead. It doesn't matter because I'm trying to prove a point. Those that don't want to turn the camera on because they're afraid how they look. I'm like, look, you know, my hair's sideways. It's okay. They don't hear it on the phone. Come on, <laughs> let's do this, people. So, um, so anyway, so we hop on and I'm making these live calls. And then as people, um, as, as people are listening to me, they put in the chat something they, they, they heard me say or handle an objection. They go, oh my gosh, I love what he, how he handled that. Or I love the long pause he did to get get the conversation back on the rails or whatever little things and when you put them in the chat bar there's a collective mastermind they go oh i didn't even realize that mm -hmm. that was planned and they mm -hmm. go oh yeah no he paused on purpose yeah because it's really powerful when you pause yeah everybody starts it. paying attention right yeah. So mm -hmm. anyway, I, I can get that to you guys, um, you know, before the call's up, uh, you're okay. welcome to hop in and listen and learn and all that stuff. Uh, uh, That'd be amazing. So, yeah. Yeah. We'll grab that from you before we end. That would be amazing. Great idea. And um, that's how you, one of the ways that you are, as you mentioned, loving on all of the real estate professionals in your world and even throughout EXP, when, you know, when you're looking at um, some of the things that you're talking to people about. Um, that are really uh, attracting uh, people, not only to you, but to this company. What are some of the things that you really feel are so important or the things that we can do together here at this organization that bring such value to realtors? You know, what are those top things you're noticing? Well, I think first and foremost, it's important to identify who your ideal client is, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and that's the same in agent attraction. I would be yeah. much, much bigger today uh, than where I am today. Uh, if I hadn't started calling broker owners, uh, I wanted to go whale hunting from the beginning. I said, look, if I'm going to make the calls, why not go get a brokerage of a hundred when everybody's trying to recruit one at a time? That actually was a mistake because three years ago, two years ago, realtors yeah. were making big money. 
uh, brokers were making big money. Even brokers that didn't have a very good business model, it was disguised, it was hidden because we were in the strongest real estate market that we've had in the history of real estate. And it was a complete tailwind environment. Everything was easy. You were, we were basically glorified order takers. And mm -hmm. those that have been in the business a long time will know that that's true. And um, so, you know, broker owners, they, they have egos. And, and, you know, God bless them. They should to a degree. They, they put it on the line. They got, it's their name, their blood, their sweat, their tears, their money. And um, so they were really vested and then making a little bit of money to think of giving all their hard work to EXP just did not compute for them. And, and I, you know, looking back, I don't blame them. Um, if I would have focused just on those that were doing, I'd say at the bare bones minimum, a capping agent. Um, but really where I've focused now is on, on icon level producers and above. I'm not calling, I'm not even approaching new agents. Um, I know that may sound terrible, but there's other people within eXp that will take on new agents. They take a lot of time. They take a lot of handholding um, and 80, 80, 80 percent of them fail within the first 18 to 24 months. That's just the facts. If we're running a business, we have to be clear on who our best client would be. And I feel that the value proposition for an icon producer is unmatched in the industry. Mm -hmm. Quite frankly, if you can pay in 16,000 and get your 16,000 back in company ownership of a publicly traded company. Now, remember, I shared with you, I was part owner in three KW offices. Yes. I had to buy in. I had to buy <laughs> yeah. in. Get this, get this, 18,000 to 20,000 per percent. Mm -hmm. So, I mean... And, and it was a, just a stone cold loser at, when I went and sold out and left, quite frankly. I didn't know it at the time because, again, I'm always trying to get the mindset of how do I become an owner? How do yeah. I get on that other side of the cash flow quadrant? Right. Well, with inflation, that was an absolute loser, quite frankly. I barely broke even. Uh, uh, but you go over to EXP and now you have five different ways to own stock in a company, publicly traded company that's debt free, that's sitting on $130 million dollars. Give me a break. I, I mean, growing at 900 agents per week on average, can you think of a better real estate model in, in the entire game for a realtor to, to change their nope. family's financial future? It doesn't exist other mm -hmm. than EXP, right? So that's why I focus on icon producers now. And so what's interesting is, and you'll learn this if you come on my calls, that's all I'm calling, is it's not a more difficult conversation than trying to talk to a you know, someone doing eight deals a year or 12 deals a year, or what have you. Right. Um, so did I answer your question? I started. Yeah, I think that's you gotta great. bring me back in, Carrie. Bring me back in. Yes, here. no, I love it. I think that you are absolutely 100 percent correct. Um, you know, if we even look at the well, icon agent, I agree with you, there is no other place, and they need to understand what that means for them. This is truly the opportunity for them to build wealth, be at a company for net zero, if not make money. Because here's the other thing about icon agents. They are influential. They're the top agents in their area. That's right. um, they probably have tried to grow a team of some sort, whether it was successful or not, the traditional way. They've got experience and skills that can bring value to other people. And so they are, this opportunity, there's no way even if it were just the attraction of a handful of agents over the, uh, over the course of a few years, they're going to be paid to be at the company. And there's just no other company that exists. We heard last week, somebody said, you know, somebody says, I'm at a 0% company. I'm at a hundred percent company. I mean, I, I don't pay anything. Well, wait, you do pay something because you pay a transaction fee, right? So if you're an icon agent doing, let's call it 25 transactions and you pay $500 a transaction, Action. You certainly are paying the company something. And yeah. so at the end of the day, where else can you actually, though, be at a net zero or be paid? Because even the 100% companies, that's not the reality. And so, you know, that's a big deal. I would add to that, Matthew, and I'm sure you've seen this. I even think just for the, you know, for people who are capping, they're not yet to icon. And maybe in the next year, they're not going to get to icon, the market shifting a little bit, but they're cappers. Let's help them keep more of their money. Let's help them save money in healthcare. I mean, my family saved $7,000 a year for a family of four coming here. So wow. $7,000, take that off your $16,000 cap because that is instant money to your family, even though it's not coming through a commission structure, right? Now you're only at 9,000 
And then let's look at what you're going to make on the agent equity program and the gifted stock, even just on the first transaction and capping. And let's look at some business expenses that maybe you can save money on because you come here and for $85 a month, you get a great CRM, a great front facing website you can customize and pretty much any of the networking technology and referral partnerships you would need to be successful. So let's look at how they can save money and really put that in at the end of the day, I think a lot of them are also going to be way ahead financially. And so I agree with you, somebody who's selling real estate today, who wants to look more fiscally responsible to the future, that's a cap or that's an icon agent. And then to help them, you know, build this company and build wealth over time is just, it's revolutionary. And then no geographical limitations. Oh, you know, the ability to easy. scale. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, let me, let me go into kind of the recruiting process, if you will. Maybe that'll be good because yes. everybody on here is, is looking to learn about agent attraction and building reoccurring income. Right. I mean, that's why we're Correct. on here. Right. Yeah. So here's one of the, the, the biggest mistakes that people make when they come in and they, they want to start, you know, their intent is they want to recruit, but then they get ready to get ready and they don't really do much. And the reason for that is they stress themselves out. They get in their own head because they feel like they got to have all the answers to the questions. I got to know it all, right? That's a huge mistake. Actually, <laughs> this may sound weird, but the less you know, the better it can be for you sometimes because you always have an out or an excuse to say, man, that is a great question, Becky. I'm honestly, I'm still learning. This thing is growing so fast. It's such an amazing company. I don't have all the answers. I'll just tell you quite frankly, but what I do know, I've been blown away. It's changed my family's, you know, uh, and my real estate, our career, our future. But I do know someone, I'm very connected. I do know someone that knows the answer to that. Shannon Pyatt, my business partner, he's incredible. He's a rock star down in there in Texas, has a huge business. Um, he understands some of the tools you're asking about KV Core. Uh, I don't know yet the ins and outs. I'm learning from him. Why don't we hop on a call together on a Zoom? You know, he, I could get 10 to 15 minutes of his time. And uh, let's ask that question and we'll learn together. Does that sound fair? Always, that's a great question. Is that fair? Is that fair? That's a powerful question because very rare will you have someone say, well, that's not fair. No. <laughs> they go, yeah, no, that's fair. I mean, yeah, I want to learn about KV Core as well, right? You go, great. Let me set it up with Shannon. And, you know, you either do a three-way text or ideally if he's got a Calendly, you've already got it up on your screen. And you, if you're on a Zoom with your prospect, you do a Zoom screen share and you're like, yeah, it looks like he's got tomorrow at either two or four always this or that, right? Two times. And then you book the time and now you got it. And then you do a three-way group text saying, Hey, uh, Becky, this is Shannon. Shannon, this is Becky. Becky's a rock star producer, does about 42 transactions a year, about 18 million uh, out in Orlando. And, uh, you know, she had some really good questions about KV Core. And I know Shannon, you're a top producer and an absolute expert at KV Core. Frankly, I want to learn you know, the answers to her question. So we got your book tomorrow at three o'clock, whatever it is. And uh, we're excited to hop on a Zoom and learn from you. Boom, done, right? And then you do another follow-up text, um, usually the night before, and then one or two hours prior. So, hey, we'll see you on with Shannon. It's going to be great. Boom, okay? So hopefully that was helpful. Again, the power in not having all the answers to the questions. If you were a recruiter at a previous company, in that model, um, you would take the recruit from goal line to goal line, from start to finish. You would have to know all the answers. You would put the shoulder, the burden of getting them all the way in. If you have that mentality at eXp, you'll have a small business because people will recruit how they were recruited. So that so Becky will go, well, man, all I talked to and met with was Matthew. He was just brilliant. He seemed to know all the answers to my questions and this was great and, you know, and and so, by the way, that's a huge mistake because let's say I'm good enough to get Becky in, but Becky will get ready to get ready. She won't recruit. You know why? Because Matthew had all the answers and I got to be like Matthew, right? And so she's going to not feel that she's ready to start recruiting yet. But if we can turn it around and say, let's use the power of tools, let's use the power of edification, three-way Zoom calls and let the collective of the seven people above you do the heavy lifting for you, right? And you keep moving them up to your success partner and success partner and so on. Now, Becky's going to go, well, wait a minute, what was done here? 
I talked to Matthew out of the blue. Maybe it was a cold call. We built connection on the phone. He booked a time and, and we hopped on a Zoom and we watched a video together. Happened to be the model explain.com is the one that I use, Brink Go. And yes, the full 30 minutes. Don't just send a link to them to watch the video on, the, on their own. Don't do what I did the first year and a half to two years. Me, who thought I was very coachable and was listening to Brent Gove, who's a very close friend of mine, by the way. And I'm just super coachable, aren't I? I wasn't because he was telling me to not send the video. Watch it with them so you can control the environment because these things are attention takers. These smartphones, realtors that are doing 30, 40 deals a year, gosh, they're getting email notifications, text notifications, Facebook notifications. They got the kids, the dog, the, the husband, the wife. I mean, they're, they're spinning a lot of plates and to go and have them sit down for 30 minutes on their own to watch a video, it's not going to happen. And if they do, they're going to hear it, but they're not going to listen to it, right? There's a big difference. Those that have raised kids between hearing and listening. And so we want to control the environment. We want to hop on the Zoom with them. And I literally, when I, before I start the video, I go, hey, look, do you got a notepad? Make sure you get a notepad, okay? Oh, I got one over there. Okay, I'll wait. Go go get it. Then I'll wait. And they go, they go, okay, really? And I go, yeah, no, no, you, this is life-changing stuff. I want you to take notes. And I go, hey, here's the other thing. Let's do this. A little housekeeping. We're gonna go on uh, we're gonna go on a flight. Um, you know, like on a flight, they make you put it on airplane mode, right? So you, and I literally do this in my camera. I go, see this right here? Let's just put our phone on airplane mode, right? just for 30 minutes, right? Short little puddle jumper flight. But this is so valuable information. I don't want you to be distracted with a Facebook notification that, that you know, would distract you. So let's just do 30 minutes. Don't worry. The world will not end. Your business will still be there. It's okay. It'll be okay. We'll do it together. All right. And so I do that. And then we sit down and we watch the video together. Okay. And then after that, my whole goal is to find out what they liked about the video and to get them on with my expert, Carrie, right? Or Shannon or somebody else, whoever it is that's in my success line above me. Uh, I want to get them in front of uh, my prospect in front of them as soon as possible and get them off me, right? Less of me, more of the people, because that's what they're going to duplicate when they come on board. So um, now... I can keep going, Carrie, unless you got questions. You're good? Okay, just taking it in. All right. Anybody have any questions? It looks like we do have one. All right, what do yes, we got? Go ahead and meet yourself. Let's see. So, you okay, yeah. There we go. Uh, Herb, Herb Cunningham from Delaware. Quick question for you. I have received two calls um, in the last week from another brokerage wanting me to come in and interview with them. Okay. So my question to you will be, what would be the strategy to sit down and hear what they have to say, but also position myself to let them hear what I have to say about EXP. Wow, Herb, I love it. You're, you're, uh, you're, it's another level, right? You're going into the lion's den. So um, I would say if your belief in what we're doing here at EXP is super high, um, you know, you could go in there. I probably myself, um, just because I am good on the phone and I call top, you know, icons and above all over the nation, I don't know that I would take time to go um, sit down with someone looking to recruit me necessarily. I might, I just don't get that much. But if you're feeling really confident in, in the model of EXP and your belief is super strong and you're pretty bulletproof, yeah, I'd go in because when you are bulletproof, you know, coming out of an event, it's another aside. If you are not attending major events, um, you know, shame on you in a, in a loving way because you're really hindering yourself because when you can get it to these events, you become more and more bulletproof all the time because you meet people in the hallways and in these different breakout sessions that are doing business at EXP all over the country. And you look at them and you're like, oh my gosh, like how many people do you have in your group? You got 700 and some odd. And in your mind, you're going, really? They got 700? I should be crushing this thing, <laughs> right? I mean, truth be told. So when you go to these functions, you get you get fired up and excited and motivated and you get bulletproof. So yeah, Herb, if you want to go and, and uh, meet with them and do a reverse recruit, absolutely, you could do that. Um, looks like we've got a hand raised, Worley Real Estate. Go ahead. 
Yeah, I'm just curious. Um, you said you, you talked to you know icon agents all over the 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 country. What is your how does your prospecting system? What does that look like? How did you identify? Like, where, how, where do you how, how do you get these people? Uh, you know, how like, do I find the icons, or how what do I say when I got them on the phone? How are you introducing these conversations? Where are you finding them at? Yeah, so you, I mean, there's a lot of different ways. You can go on realtor, uh, realtor.com and search that way. Uh, broker, what is it? Broker metrics. Um, gosh, there's, there's a broker. number of, you can search your MLS, right? Shannon, hey, go man. ahead. I'm sorry, it's Market View Broker, brother. Okay, Market View Broker. Yeah. yeah. There's also mm -hmm. Broker Metrics as well. Yeah, that one's really expensive, though. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm just giving you ideas on where you can find these or what have you. Um, now, Let's let's role play here. Um, what was your name? Oh, I'm making her work there on the mute button. Sorry, I'm, I'm Jason. Jason, you're an icon. Where are you out of? Uh, Branson, Missouri. Branson, Missouri. Okay, uh, that's funny. I'm I've been calling Missouri. I'm flying out there on Wednesday, but um, uh, we are have a biz business planning workshop um, at, in Creevecore on Friday the 18th from 9 to 1.30 and uh, lunch will be provided. Um, so you're welcome to come. How far, Brant, was that two hour drive, three hour drive? Three, four, four hour that's drive. St. Louis. Okay, well, yeah, make a day of it, right? Get a hotel room and just have a Friday. Work on your business, not in your business all the time. That's another mistake realtors do is they work on in their business 24 seven and never work on it. But anyway, um, so we'll, I'll call you up and I'm sorry, your name again was? Jason. Jason. So you'll ring, ring. Hey, how's it going, Matt? Well, you don't know me. I'm calling you out of the blue. So uh, is this Jason? <laughs> yes, this is Jason. Hey, Jason, this is Matthew Stewart. I'm a real estate broker out in Sacramento. Um, how are you doing? I'm good. Are you trying to sell me leads? <laughs> no, I'm a real estate broker out of Sacramento. <laughs> I appreciate you, though. You got some leads for me? I heard phone calls from people trying to sell me something a day. So. Yeah, no problem. But you got leads for me? Uh, maybe. All okay. Right. All right. Well, good. I called the right guy. I love it. Am I calling you at a good time? You got a minute or two? Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Awesome. Well, hey, Jason, I'm looking uh, and it looks like you're quite a producer out there in Branson. Uh, looks like you're doing about 35 deals a year. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, just about actually. Okay. That's phenomenal. You know, that's probably in the top four to 5% of agents in the whole nation. Uh, were you aware of that? Uh, well, I knew that, you know, probably 20, 20 to 25 was pretty, I, I don't know, like on a national scale, but for our market here, it was doing pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're doing real well, man. Yeah. You're top four or 5%. Hey, that's, that's the reason why I was calling actually. Uh, what's interesting is with that type of production that you're doing and the business model that my partners and I represent, you would actually be awarded significant amounts of ownership in a publicly traded real estate company on NASDAQ. Uh, let me ask you something. Are you familiar with the icon award at eXp? No, no. Okay. Yeah. I'll tell you what, it's significant and you should know about it. We should carve out a couple minutes so that you can at least know about it because it's been pretty life-changing for realtors that are doing the type of volume that you're doing. Uh, in fact, you would be awarded, okay, significant amounts of ownership. I'm talking $16,600 every year that you reach that icon award and it is publicly traded on NASDAQ. So you uh, you truly have something of value, some equity that, uh, you know, if something were to happen to you and you couldn't sell real, real estate anymore, you'd, you'd actually walk away with something of, uh, of true worth. Um, what's typically a better day, kind of a slower day for you? Is it midweek, like a Tuesday or Wednesday? Probably like a Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday. Yeah, morning or afternoon? Morning, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, you know what? Looking at my calendar here, I got Wednesday morning. Uh, I got 9.30 or 11.15, which is, which is better for you? 15 works. Okay, great. And is your email uh, Jason Rockstar Realtor at gmail.com? Is that right? Know it, man. That's right. That's right. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll do a calendar invite for you, Jason, and um, we'll set that up. And I look forward to connecting with you on uh, Wednesday at 11 15. Awesome. Sounds great. Thanks for the call. All right. Man. Hey, have a great rest of your day. You too. Okay. Bye bye. So if you notice, um, you know, he threw me some things and you got to have fun with it and just play around with it. But um, you know, the purpose of the call is to not go and vomit EXP on them. The purpose of the call is to book the meeting. No different if you're calling expired listings for production, book the meeting so you can get in the door. 
right? So um, hopefully that was helpful for you, but you'll hear more of that on our, our uh, live calls. I do an hour Monday through Saturday. Um, but I do also want to get into the power of edification um, because that takes it from you taking a recruit from goal line to goal line. And the better that you can edify, the, the faster your business will grow. Now, is everybody clear on what edification is? Because I, I did do a talk sometimes and people were like, what exactly does that word mean? And maybe it's more because I'm, you know, born again Christian and we use it in church a lot. I don't know. Somebody brought that up and I said, yeah, I don't know. Maybe does everybody know what edification? It means you raise something up. You're, 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 you know, edifying or glorifying it or, or speaking into it. So with that as the definition, it doesn't always have to be a person. You literally can edify an event. Uh, if you notice, I edified our business planning workshop on the 18th. And I would have gone into more detail if we were on the call. Um, I literally had a cold call this morning. We've never talked or met. They're an icon producer. Actually, they're a broker owner of a small brokerage of five. And initially said that they didn't have time this week to meet. But then I said, well, we are doing a, a broker or a business planning workshop on Friday. And I have him open now to potentially taking his wife out to the business planning workshop, getting a hotel room Friday night and, and working on his business instead of in his business, right? And that was from a cold call and he might show up this Friday, right? So it's amazing what you can do if you'll just pick up the phone and, and do the work. Now, there is what's called um, a three-way triangle that's super important. Uh, Herb, I'll give you the, the details um, at the end of this. Um, the the three way three way triangle. Now, I'm I kind of drew it out just to be because I'm a visual person. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. It may not be the best, but anyway, you have a triangle. You can draw this down. You got a pro the prospect at the top. You got uh, you on the lower left, and then your success partner on the lower right. Okay. Now, on the on on the lower left of the uh, triangle, it's you. And you have trust with your prospect. On the lower right is your success partner, your expert. We'll say Shannon in this case, right? He has respect. And the only reason that he has respect with your prospect is because you've spoke highly of Shannon and edified Shannon. Kind of like what I modeled earlier when I said, hey, Becky, let's get you on a call. That's a great question. We'll learn together with Shannon, who's a real expert at KV Core, right? Now, What's interesting is your prospect trusts you, but they may not respect you because you're at EXP. You may be a smaller producer than them, right? A lot of people on these calls feel like I can't call an icon until I'm doing icon volume. How many of you, let's be honest, how many of you said, ah, I'm not ready yet to call an icon producer or what have you? Okay. Somebody, oh, that's funny. It lowered, it raised the hand. I must have the, uh, let's see if I do it again. Oh, anyway. It, it put my hand up when I did that. Anyway, so, so I hear that sometimes where people say, hey, I can't call them because I'm not an icon. Now, I'll tell you, I have a 21, 21-year-old 21 uh, in my organization has not closed an escrow yet. And he came onto my calls and basically was mirroring and matching and modeling using my scripting, everything that he learned by listening. And he started calling icon producers and he was booking one to two a day, right? And they never asked, what's your production? Because it didn't matter. On the call, it doesn't matter what my production is or what the caller's production is. They don't care about you. They care about themselves <laughs> and what's in it for them. I mean, that's just human nature, right? So if you can bring them some value, um, then they're going to be all ears and they're going to listen. Angie, I saw your hand. I, I wasn't ignoring you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no problem. So I was wondering on the script with Jason, what do you say, like just maybe one or two one-liners, if they're just really resistant, like, oh, I keep getting these recruiting calls, or I just, you know what, I'm fine where I am, and just aren't really receptive or open to, um, you know, a next step. Yeah, well, let's do it. So Angie, you're a top producer. Uh, where are you out of? Uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Minnesota. Okay, awesome. <laughs> so uh, what area? Uh, 20 minutes outside of Minneapolis, Plymouth. Minneapolis. Okay. So ring, ring. Hello. Hi, is this Angie? 
It is. Yes. Hey, Angie, this is Matthew Stewart. I'm a real estate broker out in Sacramento, California. How you doing? I'm, I'm well. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Uh, am I calling you at a good time? You got just a minute or two? Yeah, just probably about two. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. That's all it'll really take. Although I'm really curious though, how's the weather out there? I mean, we're kind of spoiled here in California. So how is it out <laughs> I mean, there? 23 degrees and snowing. Oh my gosh. Is that warm for you? <laughs> uh, yeah, it can be. It's not okay. 45 below, so I'll take it. Yeah, I've heard stories. Anyway, <laughs> well, hey, it looks like you're quite a producer out there, Angie. Looks like you're doing about 45 deals a year. Uh, is that correct? Yep. Awesome. That that's phenomenal. That's in the top two to three percent of all agents in the nation. Did you know that? Um, no, I, I know in the area it's it's not bad, but yeah, no. Nah. Yeah, no, that's that's really good. Curious, how long have you been doing that production? Um, you know, about five years. Wow, that's strong. Okay, yeah. great. Well, that's that's the reason I'm actually calling. Um, you know, with doing that type of production for the amount of years you've done, you would be awarded significant amounts of ownership. Uh, within the real estate model that my partners and I represent. Um, mm -hmm. Are you familiar with the Icon Award at EXP? No, but I get these emails and calls all the time and oh, I just, I, I don't want to waste your time. I'm, I know, right? you know, I'm good. I, I really yeah. have I don't know. I just, yeah, no, I I'm, I'm good where I am. Yeah, no, I totally get it. In fact, my partners and I were the same way. I've been doing this now 27 years and gosh, we get calls all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All the time. Especially this time calls. of year. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. It's moving season, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, and of course, with the production you're doing, of course, you're going to get calls. I mean, shoot, yeah. we were that way too. In fact, yeah. we actually discounted the the model because we didn't, we were pretty comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Have you heard of the, um, the book, Good to Great? Um, I've heard of it. Collins? I haven't read it. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's a great book, Angie, with you being a high performer, you really should read it because really the premise of the book is that um, the enemy of great or that good is the enemy of great. Mm -hmm. Or another way to be said is that our comfort zone is our broke zone, mm -hmm. right? There's no growth in our comfort zone. We have to get uncomfortable, but, but no, really the reason I was reaching out is with the volume that you're doing, you would be awarded significant amounts of, I'm talking $16,600 mm -hmm. year after year after year on a publicly traded company on, on NASDAQ. You're mm -hmm. familiar with NASDAQ, correct? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. So with yeah. you doing that volume for five years, have you been awarded or gifted any ownership in your current company? Um, no, I just, you know, I get, um, you know, the awards, obviously the acclamations, I do get a little bit of, uh, I get a break compared to the agents that are doing okay. two to five yeah. deals. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, they do compensate me for, for showing up uh, at the level I do and also helping other agents um, up their business. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Um, well, I'll tell you the, the reason that my partners and I were even open-minded to taking a look to learn one, we're kind of fervent learners. Would you consider yourself a learner? You yes, like to learn? Yep. You should always okay. be, be a student. Yep. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And that's probably why you're performing at the level that mm -hmm. you are. You know, what I would recommend realizing you're not making a move, you're pretty comfortable and happy where mm -hmm. you are. Yep. I would say, stay there at Remax. It's a good company. You're, mm -hmm. you know, in fact, you can't even come to EXP. Okay. <laughs> so we'll just put that off the table, but let's, let's stay in the space of learning. And mm -hmm. why don't we book a time next week? What's typically a better time for you? Like Tuesdays or Wednesdays? You know, you know, Wednesdays are, but I'm just obviously yeah. trying to wrap up my year. It's just really, really busy. And I, I just honestly, I don't see myself, again, I don't want to waste your time. I just don't see myself moving. So I don't know why, why I waste Yeah, no, I, I don't want you to move. Stay where mm -hmm. you're at. But mm -hmm. uh, with you doing the production you've been doing as long as you have, I'm sure you're familiar with backup offers, right? Yes. They're not a bad thing. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> Oh, yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all I'm saying is, you know what, in order for you to even analyze a good backup offer, you need to take the time to learn it. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. because what we do know that is very constant in this life is change. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing we can we can bank on. Right. At mm -hmm. some point, something's going to change and you may be open minded to maybe you may be a little uncomfortable for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. You know, it may be a year, two years, five years. Doesn't matter. It's not a waste of my time. I'm now passionate about sharing other uh, with other top performers the ability to, um, you know, learn about this model because it's been life changing for my wife and I. So mm -hmm. why don't we just connect next Wednesday? 
you stay at the brokerage you're at, but we're just going to put the learning hat on. And uh, is it typically mornings or afternoons better for you? Um, mornings are probably better. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I got 10 or 1130. What's better? Um, probably about 10 with 10, like for how long? Like, oh, 30 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then your email, blah, blah, blah. And then I book it and I go, I'll do a calendar invite and so on. So, okay. all right. So there you go. Right. And uh, so hopefully you got some things from that and this is being recorded. So you can go back and listen to it and so on. So, but I mean, this is stuff I do Monday through Saturday. So you're welcome to listen in and learn. And then, you know, you go from learning to doing and you, mm -hmm. you, you're making the calls and we have now 10, 11, 12 people. It's growing that are doing calls at the same time I'm doing calls. And, uh, and then we use the chat feature and, and so on. So, but I wanted to finish up on this. So, so the, the three-way triangle is super important, you guys, because your prospect may not, may not respect you in business, but they'll trust you typically if there's someone, you know, in your warm market. So they, you know, um, sorry, I'm, I'm getting distracted. I'm reading the chats. I'll go back and read the chats, but so you you calling your warm market agents you've done deals with you know or whatever they know you like you they probably trust you right but they may not respect you so when you bring in a third party success partner and somebody had mentioned well if you don't have any upline support well you you need to build cross line uh, relationships right uh, I bet there's a bunch of people on this call that would be willing to help you and vice versa and you build that collective you guys are here every week you guys should be uh, very freely giving that hey if you need some help you know, book my calendar, I'll help you and vice versa. Um, but so when you match and bring in the power of edification of your success partner, your expert, now that prospect will respect the expert, expert but they don't trust the expert. They don't know the expert. I don't trust this guy, but, uh, but I respect him for what he's done because of how, you know, you are talking about them. So you have the trust of your prospect and your expert because of your evocation has the respect. And when you put trust and respect together, you can move that prospect, right? And the, the movement of the prospect is one, to get them onboarded. If they're ready, you'll have some that'll be like, yeah, I've actually been looking at making a move. This is great. Let's do it. Um, those come by doing a lot of reps. You'll, you'll, you know, the more you do, the luckier you get. But the, uh, the other thing is, the next movement is to get them on to the next expert, the next person, right? And the more people that they can be put in front of, the more faces and, and, and different styles and personalities, they're going to realize, wow, this is pretty amazing. This is very collaborative. This is very supportive culture because they're coming from brick and mortar, most of them. And they think in their mind that that is just the most amazing. That's the bee's knees in regards to culture. How could an online company beat that? And then all of a sudden they're hopping on Zooms and meeting Matthew and meeting Carrie and, and meeting Susanna and Marcus and Anna. And they're like, wow, these are some dynamic people. I would like to do business with these people, right? So hopefully that uh, was a value to you. We can kind of, Carrie, go ahead if you want to jump in because I'll just, I just keep No, talking. that's awesome. Let's just really quick see if there's anything we need to address in the chat because this yep, is amazing. I'm doing that and now. Um, I know you've brought a lot of value. So that's because our chat is full. <laughs> okay, good. So what video so do you show with the prospects? I show the Brent Gove, the model explained.com. I think it's probably the best video we got going. Um, let's see. Do you think now is the time to talk to franchise owners due to the shifting market? This is a very good question. Yes, I think you should be talking to broker owners at this time. You do need to be careful though. This question specifically mm -hmm. mentioned franchise owners yeah. and there is what's called torturous interference. And mm -hmm. so you need to ask a qualifying question before you get into any depth on things is, you know, where are you at within your contract? Are you within six months of your contract renewal or ex expiration? If they are, Katie, bar the door, you go for it, man. You can go into as deep as you want, get them on to every expert. If they're outside the six months, you can build relationship and connection, but you can't go into numbers and really diving deep into the XP model because it probably won't be your prospect that goes to sue you. It'll be their franchise or the, you know, the Remax, uh, the whatever, the Century 21s of the world, because uh, they're feeling very threatened by EXP. So you got to be careful on that. Independent brokerages, not a problem because you're dealing with the broker owner. There That's is right. no franchise. Now, what times are the calls? They are Monday through Saturday. They are a little bit different on, on the times. Um, 
I'll, I'll just tell you, you can jot this down. Mondays are 9 a.m. Pacific, and they are at chatwithmatt.live. C-H-A-T-W-I-T-H-M-A-T-T dot live. Then on uh, Tuesdays, it's going to shift to chatwithmatt.live. We had it with someone else, but he's not able to host it on Tuesdays now. So it'll be me, chatwithmatt.live, same thing, same time, 9 a.m. Pacific. Wednesdays, 7 a.m. Pacific, okay? So 10, 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, and that'll be chatwithmatt.live. Then on Thursdays, we partner with Randy Bird, who's one of my business partners, and we do randybird.live, and that's B-Y-R-D. That's every Thursday from 8.30 Pacific to 10 o'clock. We bring in a top speaker from 8.30 to 9 o'clock, and they pour in kind of like what I'm doing here for you guys. And then Randy does live calls from 9 a.m. until 10 a.m., and you can listen to him and, and you know have a different voice. Fridays, we're back on chat with Matt.live at 9 a.m. Pacific. And then on Saturdays, for those that are just the crazies, the Green Berets, the Navy SEALs, Saturday morning calls, you guys are amazing. Yep, we're doing it 9 a.m. Pacific, chat with Matt.live. All right. And what's interesting, let me give you the numbers to give you a little inspiration. So if you do, um, if you book one appointment, let's go really conservative. So one appointment a day, five days a week, that's five, right? 20 in a month. And these are all icon producers, let's say. Um, half of them won't show. Let's just be conservative. So you'll have 10 appointments. And if you do the process that I'm sharing with you, you'll probably sign up one a month. At the end of two years, you'll have 24. We'll throw in an extra because you'll have some buildup. Uh, and so you'll have 25 personally sponsored icon level producers, which will be guaranteed FLQAs for you. That will unlock all six or, or six levels of payout. From that date forward, fast forward three years, so now we're five years total into it, your group will grow to 500 agents. 500 agents, very conservatively, before the turn in the market, we factored uh, eight, um, organizations were making about $800 per agent per year. Now I'm backing it down to $600 per agent per year, just to be conservative. So you do the math, 500 agents times 600, that's $300,000 a year in an ongoing recurring income. Now it's only recurring as long as they're doing the production and capping uh, or, you know, selling homes. Um, so it is not a guaranteed recurring income, but the odds are you're calling icons. They know icons and so on. They know icons. Um, it'll probably be way more than $600 per agent per year on average, if you do what I'm telling you, but I'm being very conservative, 300 grand a year. Now, I don't know about you, you know, that we may have some real big ballers on here. The 300,000 is a drop in the bucket, but residual income, 300,000, that's life-changing for, I don't know, most anybody. In fact, I think probably Grant Cardone would sign up because of 300,000 residual income. Oh, wait. Oh, they did. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, hopefully that helps you. You're always welcome. Let's see here. Did someone type that out? One appointment. Look at you guys. That's awesome. She typed it all. Good job, Carrie. You're a good typer. Fast. All right. Any <laughs> other it. questions? I love it. Yes, Becky. Last question yeah, before we wrap up. Yeah, one last question. So yeah. you mentioned you were calling another state and you were from California. So obviously in my current market, I have trend graphics, which is the same thing as broker metrics. Yeah. How do you get information for people in another state if you're calling other states? How did you know that producer's information or was that just well a lot of times you you can build a you know if you have someone in that market you could start out calling realtor.com and you could kind of see their production you can get to mm. where you can go yeah this one's definitely at the very least a capper probably an icon producer call them up you get someone in that market now you tag team you're like hey we're going to work together to build build out your business becky Got it. you're, you're okay. in uh where are you i'm in naples florida Naples, Florida. I hear that's a dynamite place, by the way. All the people with money go to Naples. So <laughs> I'm dreaming big here, going to Naples at some point in the future. But anyway, so so yeah, so you're my rock star in Naples. I go, hey, you know what? Let's work together, Becky. You are you have access to the MLS, right? Let's pull some data from the MLS. You could hire a VA that you could give you know access to your 
um, you know, log in or what have you, and you start just mining some of that data and building a list. And okay. then now you and I are working together. And remember, a recruit is not a recruit unless you get them too. So if Becky doesn't get two people signed up, and it's my job as her leader to help her get two sponsored as soon as I can, because if she doesn't get that, she may be gone. She may get frustrated. Maybe EXP is delayed on their check. Maybe there's some other little hiccup in the road because, you know, it's not a perfect company. There isn't, it doesn't exist. There is no perfect company. So yeah. our job is for the first 90 days to mother hen Becky and really get her the best experience that we can. And ideally, if we can get her two of her own. So now she takes on a little mother hen aspect, mm -hmm. like, hey, these, I got some, I got some people. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And now their producers, she's getting that, you know, $500 a month uh, or, you know, gosh, I got 800 this month that showed up on my bank account from EXP. What's that all about? You go, oh, remember that little revenue share thing? And we got those two agents yeah. that produce. Wow. Can, can that go more? Yeah. Let's mm -hmm. work together and grow more. Get your list. Right. So yeah. that's kind of yeah. how you start working in a market. That's where I'm focused on Missouri right now. I happen to find a couple rock stars and they're open to recruiting and building. And I said, great, you yes. will not outrun me. If you're a nine on the treadmill, I'm a 9.1. Let's go. <clears throat> you try to outwork me. Let's go. I dare you. You've you never That's had exactly support. What like I was it. wondering <clears throat> is, is how you got that information. That's good. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. I got a couple minutes more. I don't know. Uh, okay, good. Yeah. So somebody wanted, Loni uh, was asking about the triangle again. <clears throat> Can you show or share about oh, the triangle yeah. again real briefly? You want to take a screenshot or something? Let me. I mean, this is really high tech stuff here that I. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a screenshot. So, can you see it? Prospect in the top, you, and then what does it say? I'm a success partner. So you got success partner. That's your expert, right? Yeah. Uh, and they they bring the respect because you're edifying <laughs> them properly, and then you have the trust of your prospect because typically it's your warm market, someone that knows you, you close to right. deal with, etc. And the purpose is to move the prospect. Now. You either move them into onboarding if you can, but they're typically not ready the first exposure, um, right. but move them into the next appointment with one another success partner, right? Yeah. And then from there, you you bam fam. That's what that other is. <laughs> People are like, what the heck is bam fam? That's book a meeting from a meeting. You <laughs> Book a meeting from a meeting. Listen, Love it. Listen, you never leave a meeting mm -hmm. without booking a follow-up meeting. Yes. If you leave a meeting, go, man, Carrie, that was great. I really enjoyed connecting with you. And I'm glad we got to watch the video together. And I know you're going to, you know, think about it with your husband and all that stuff. And, you know, that's great. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gosh, great meeting you. Bye. You no. totally fumbled. Like you totally dropped the ball. It's totally on you. You have to go, hey, Carrie, I really enjoyed connecting with you. I love that you what you liked most about the video, um, which by the way, little side, when you are done watching the video, you need to ask them, what did you like most about the video? But don't stop there. It's, yeah. hey, Marcus, what did you like most about the video? I'm kind of curious. Was it the 50 hours of live training or was it the, you know, uh, agent equity ownership stake on a publicly traded company? Was it the, you know, was it the col amazing collaboration of all of us of being owners or, or was it something else? Now, yeah. secretly, I'm really hoping they say the revenue share residual income because that yeah. light just lights my candle. I'm like, yes, I got one. This is great. We're going to run together. This is great. I've been looking for you. Right. Yeah. But so when they say, oh, I really like the revenue share, I go, that's amazing. All right. Mm -hmm. So, and then I might dive a little deeper in some of the revenue share. And then I can edify my next success expert, book a meeting from a meeting, and get them yeah. on with Carrie, who's just a rock star on, on the rev share. Right. And yes. it's Anya, is that right? Yes, Aina. Aina. Uh, Aina. Aina. Thanks for sharing all of this. Is there a number of calls per day that you recommend or do you just go till you have the appointments that you want? It, it would be good to set a, um, for accountability purposes, in my opinion, a number of calls that you're going to do every day. I don't do that at this stage in the game because I've gotten pretty effective at booking appointments. So um I, I block out an hour a day. My goal is to book two appointments a day with an icon. And it's usually within a 45 minute period because when I hop on a Zoom, 
we're, we're debriefing for the first five to 10 minutes. Then I get into calling and then I stop usually 10 minutes before the top of the hour. We debrief again. I go through the chat questions, what you liked. Okay. Uh, how did it, how did it go for you? Colleen, did you get book some appointments? Susanna, did you do some dials today or were you just listening? Okay. Tanya, how'd you do? Oh, you booked an appointment with an icon. That's awesome. Way to go. Mm -hmm. um, so in the beginning, yeah, have a minimum number of dials. I would say, you know, you're probably looking at, depending on how aggressive and serious you are about age and attraction, um, usually 25 dials is something that's about an hour time frame to an hour and a half, somewhere in there. You'll probably get anywhere from eight to 12 that will pick up, um, that you'll have some, oh, did you just dap? Is that what that was? <laughs> I see. So I was trying to mute myself, but I couldn't do it fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so everybody had to hear me. Sorry. Yeah. So anyway, you'll probably have about eight conversations and you should get to a point where you're booking, you know, anywhere from one to three appointments. Yeah. So that's amazing. Yeah. So last question, because Jason asked, are you really doing an event in Missouri? You are. Yes. That oh, was I'm not... dead. I'm, I'm so <laughs> that serious here. Absolutely. Yeah. So here's uh, how would I show it? Oh, you know what? I could share it on my screen. Well, here I'll put then... the, uh, this will be the best way. So let's see if I can remember STL plan 2023.eventbrite.com. You should be able to click on that. Maybe I need to put HTTPS. Carrie, maybe you can help with yeah. that. Okay. Yep. Yeah. But can you um, what now? Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, uh, um, Jason, you it's on Eventbrite. So I'll send this to you. Yeah, STL plan 2023 eventbrite. It's this Friday from nine until 1.30. Uh, lunch is provided uh, for the second session. I'm gonna do a model explained um, live explaining EXP, kind of like Brent's video, but I'm gonna do it live. And that'll be after the business planning workshop from nine to noon. Um, so there you go. Okay. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for being here um, and spending time. And Matthew, as always, this is amazing. I bet you're going to have some people showing up to your calls. Thank you for sharing that with us. This Absolutely. is fantastic. And again, just another example of how lucky we are to be part of a company like this that will pour into each other. And um, it's just awesome. So thank you for your time. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, guys. I love Thanks, it. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Okay. See you later. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.